Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about Photo Raw versus Luminar. Which one should I use? Which one is air quotes better than the other? And like a lot of things in photography, a bunch of it comes down to needs. What your needs are as a photographer, what's important to you in your uh, you know, digital world for managing your photos, processing your photos. You know, it's kind of like choosing cameras. You know, different cameras offer different features and that may be important to one photographer and less important to another. So uh, let me take one step back and just say from a processing standpoint, you know, both Photo Raw and Luminar are great photo processors. You can make great images with both of them. I use both of them in my workflow. Now, on one has a more, uh, I'll try it, like, describe it like a traditional approach where you're doing some basic fundamental adjustments, maybe leveraging some of the auto buttons, and then adding filters onto the photo to shape and craft your final image. Where Luminar has a, a different mindset, it's much more into the AI camp for quicker, faster, simpler sets of adjustments. So, you know, single slider or maybe two or three sliders at best, but you're getting a lot of different things happening with those sliders. And you get some of the uh, fancier features like sky replacement if you want to spruce up a, a blue sky or something like that in your photos. So there's a different approach to working with them. Uh, and then there is just the personal preference. Like I really like the contrast controls in On One. I really like the glow looks in Luminar. You know, my workflow, I'm still in Lightroom for my asset management because there are certain asset management features that aren't offered by the other products. Uh, but if you're not in Lightroom and you're thinking about you know, uh, which one is the better processor, think about how you like to approach your photos and that may help you decide which one is a right fit for you. Now let's talk about asset management a little bit more because both of the programs have you know, the, the basics covered. Both of them work on folders on your computer. And so here I've just got a pictures folder. I've got a few things in here. Here's all these different subfolders. And if I go into say Italy, I have a few photos in here. I look at Luminar, I have the same thing. I highlight pictures. It's showing me everything that are in all of these subfolders. But again, I'll pick Italy. It's the same set of photos. These are just folders on my computer and I can point either Photo Raw or Luminar to them, and you get some basic, you know, fundamental asset management. The folders are there. You can create albums in both programs. You can do date-based browsing. So for uh, in on one, if you've cataloged the folders, it will automatically figure out when all of those were photographed, and you can just search by date. Luminar works the same way. Now, when there's uh, more that you want out of asset management beyond just the basics, folders, I meant you know, star ratings, colors, all those things are the same. When you want to get into things like you know keywords or drilling farther down into EXIF data or uh, you know doing more intelligent filtering on that data, on one has an edge there. Picking on any one of these photos, we get more detail about what's in the photo, but we can also add information. You can add your contact information. You can add keywords. Uh, you can even enter in uh, GPS information. You can drop the photos and tag them using a map module. So that aspect is there. And when you get metadata going on, it opens up things like these filters where you can have filters based on all sorts of criteria. And so if you are into that level of metadata for your asset management, you may want to look at on one as your, you know, your hub for your photos if you're looking for something other than Adobe products. Another thing to think about is printing. Do you print your photos a lot or do you just export them and share them on the web? If you're just sharing things online, then pretty much both programs, you're going to, uh, to get what you need out of it. On one's got a few more options available in its export and it has the resize module. So if you're gonna need to upscale something, but usually you're upscaling something to get ready for a print. When it comes to printing, uh, on one has a full blown print module. You've got soft proofing in there so you can do your color corrections. And then you get into printing, you can print, you know, multi uh, sheet contact sheets. You can print, uh, you know, 
big prints, you can choose your color profiles, all those types of things. Luminars is really based on what your operating system offers. It will tap into the print subsystem, in my case, of Mac OS. Now, Mac OS is pretty good and it has a lot of options in there. I got to jump through a couple more hoops to set certain things up so I can choose paper profiles and so forth. But it doesn't have, Luminar doesn't have soft proofing. And uh, so it's not for something where I need to print something and make sure all the colors are correct for a casual print. Not bad at all. So that's something to think about there too. I'll process all day long in Luminar. I may print from somewhere else. So another area to think about is masking and retouching. How much of these things do you do with your post-processing? So both Photo Raw and Luminar have masking, have retouching tools. I think that Photo Raw's tools are stronger. The retouching tools are really, really good. The content aware fill is really, really good. Luminar doesn't have content aware fill. They, you know, they, they kind of do, um, but I haven't had as much success with it. Uh, Photo Raw has edge detection on its brushes. Luminar doesn't have that right now. And uh, for the masking, the, uh, the luminosity masks, there are more controls in Photo Raw, so you can fine tune range masks, uh, color range masks, luminosity masks. In Luminar, you can do a luminosity mask, but it's kind of a one click operation. You get that mask and that's what you get. And if you want to fine tune it, you're going to do hand painting on it, which is um, it's doable, a little more painstaking. A couple of other thoughts that come to mind are more specialty things. Like if you're doing focus stacking, that's a feature of Photo Raw. It doesn't exist in Luminar. If you're into HDR photography, that's built into Photo Raw. Luminar, not there. You got a different product from Skylum called Aurora that does HDR. So, you know, those are, are different things. Um, and really, personal preference. I'm going to come back to that again. Some of it may just be, how does the program work? Does it match the way that I think about my photos? I mentioned that, you know, On1 has got a different approach to processing a photo than Luminar. You know, Luminar is very much start with the AI filters, do a couple of things, and then maybe tweak where Photo Raw is more what I'd say traditional, what many photographers like me are used to. We build up our look with exposure and then start adding a few filters on it. And you know, maybe we'll start leveraging the auto buttons more and more. Uh, other things is, do you like the looks? Um, because different programs have different math and they'll produce different looks even with the same source material from the raw interpretation all the way on up. Uh, my other piece of advice is, Circling back to asset management, I really am a fan of choosing one program to manage my photos. Yes, I have a folder structure on my computer and I could point any program I wanted to at it and it will find my photos. But as soon as I start adding keywords or star ratings or creating albums and uh, doing all of those asset management things, I want them in one place so I can quickly find any photo that I have in my library. And you know, um, that's one of the reasons I'm still using Lightroom to do my asset management. There are certain things that I've become reliant on in Lightroom that haven't made their way into other products. Uh, so really spend some time thinking about your asset management needs and choose one program to manage your photos. And if you need to farm out processing jobs to different software, that's okay too. You know, it's, it's all right to, to walk something through multiple uh, programs if you need to for the final photo. I hope this helps you out. I hope this gives you some information. Got other thoughts about it? Drop them in the comments below because I'm sure there's things I'm not thinking about because, hey, I'm a landscape photographer. I've got my certain needs. But, you know, if you're doing you know, weddings or, you know, you're doing portraits or you're doing something, you know, something else, different, different genres of photography end up driving different needs from the software. So, you know, fire away in the comments below and uh, that's really going to do it. My name is Scott Davenport. Thanks very much for watching and until next time, happy shooting.